All right, Weasel here. I'm trying to do some recording today and running my unit chip on my truck. I don't know if you're going to see this real well, but you can see that I'm running. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's even going to focus very well. But I got my OBD2 connector hooked up as well as my uh, um, uh, program for running the unit chip. Yeah, I guess you can see that RPM that I'm running. Five, six hundred. It's moving around from. It's doing that. And then if I go over here and look at the RPMs from my engine management system, you can see that. <clears throat> I'm running a um, what they call MAP 48 at the moment. And uh, since I'm doing all this by myself, I don't think the videos are going to be very nice. But just trying to. Uh, and to show you how the unit chip works as well as uh, even use this to uh, learn a few things but as you can see right now I'm running this uh, what they call a timing style 48 with a signal per pass set at uh, 1 and uh, um, this has been uh, kind of all over the map if I change my program right now which I have my uh, MAP2 program set at a 5 degree advance what you're going to see is you're going to see this number go to 5 because that's for MAP2 and then you'll also be able to see an RPM change and you'll probably also hear a change in the way the motor's running right now okay not much of a change Yeah, I flipped it back to zero. Okay, now what I've done here is I've changed my map from map 48 to map 47. And you see the signals are set to four. Okay. And uh, it's set at A10 full high. Then uh, you'll notice that I'm not seeing an RPM change here at all. But obviously I have an RPM change off my OBD2. But in MAP 47, it seems like the RPMs like the lock. So what I'm going to do now is all I'm going to do is go into the MAP set, and I'm going to change the signals per rev to 8. And uh, we're going to hit close, okay? And then we're going to uh, download that, and we'll see what the truck does. Because at one point, I do believe I was able to get the map 47 to register an rpm though it was inaccurate but at least it wasn't frozen like it is right now we'll see what it does and we'll see if the truck stalls or not okay all right so we've got the eight in there and uh, you can see that my rpms are still frozen at uh, 617 so we will change this now to a 16 because I do have 16 tooth per uh, on my tone ring but I'm not saying that that is correct I'm just going through a series of experiments trying to find out if there's anything I can do to this map 47 to actually uh, record a valid RPM all right there we go, and we're still stuck on 617. Okay, I'm still on map 47, and as you can see, I'm getting an, uh, an RPM indication, which is good, because this is the first time I've actually had it on map 47 that had any degree of accuracy. And the only thing I did, or that I changed, was in this map set, I changed my signals per rev to 16, but then on this timing input, which is right here, I put this A8 and A9 off, and I have no idea what that is. But nevertheless, I do have a timing reading. Okay, so now the real question is what happens if I take uh, a few of these blocks and I fill that with, let's say, uh, two degrees? Say okay, so now we got those filled up with a two degree advance. And now we'll download this 
and we will see if it accepts the uh, the two degree advance or not or if it'll start to stumble and run rough okay so this is interesting because obviously it's saying that right now it's applying a two degree advance but I sure didn't have an RPM change but well now it says zero again so oh, there's back to two let's see what happens when I let's see for starters my map set is potentially good for 10 so we'll close this and now I'm going to change all these uh, sites and we will uh, put five degrees in there okay let's download that Now my truck, I did uh, momentarily shut it off before, and uh, the only thing I've noticed that I still have an RPM reading, but I'm not reading anything for coolant temperature calculated load. I find it peculiar. Uh, I might have to make sure that I'm still connected. But like even adding this five degrees to my timing, I don't see it here at all. So let's just uh, chase this a little bit. Maybe I'll actually shut the truck off once and do a restart and see if it still runs the same. Okay, I'm still on map 47 and I decided to fill the timing boxes to 10 even though presently it's set to 5. I'm still getting an RPM reading so let's download the 10, 10 degrees advance and see if we can uh, sense a change in engine RPM or if it's going to run smooth or not. Okay, that should be a 10 degree advance, but my RPMs are actually, well, there's a little jump. It's like it's, even the advance now goes from zero to 10. And I would think that that should be steady since I'm running in these particular sites right here. Okay, now after I change my timing values back to five, the only other change I made in this uh, map was to switch this from A8, A9 off to A10 pull both. And when I did that, there was no change in RPM, but you can see my RPMs now again have locked. And obviously below what the engine's running, it's not idling at 484. So now we can go back to this map set and go back to this uh, A8, A9 off, close that. We'll download that. And we'll see if I get back to where I was just a moment ago. Okay, I'm back to reading an RPM. So obviously in this particular map set, this A8, A9 off seems to be most effective. If I put the A10 pull high on, we'll try that. But I don't think it's going to do anything. But we'll see. Okay, what's happened is again, what's happened is my RPMs have locked. So in this particular unit, the only one that seems to work uh, work best is when I hit this A8, A9, okay? And now I'm also gonna change this to 16. And we're going to see what happens. And then maybe we'll try a different map entirely.
Okay. I have an RPM reading. The only difference now in this map set is I changed this number of signals per rev to 16. Whether or not that does anything or not, I don't know, but I'm going to fill these now with uh, 10 degrees. And we'll see if we can advance the timing by uh, 10 degrees. Originally, MAP 47 didn't give me any kind of an RPM reading, so obviously, with playing with those other settings, I've been able to actually get it to uh, record. But now, if that's a 10 degree advance, it sure hasn't done anything to the timing, and you can see that even though it's programmed to do 10, it's actually at zero, now it goes to 10, back down to zero. It's like it's gonna cycle through. I, I can't explain that. And then, if I look at the uh, ignition timing on the truck, when the RPMs go up a little bit, my timing over here is dropping back down. That's uh, odd. Nevertheless, uh, we're going to go back to this map set now, and I'm going to change this signals per rev. I'm going to change that to uh, 4. And we will try this. And then maybe we'll try it at one. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I am getting an RPM reading. My timing down here is still going from 0 to 10. And then this timing display over here will dance around between, uh, well, it's going drop. That's moving around, but that I'm not as concerned about as I am with the one that's actually on the unit chip. That should really lock on and stay there, I would think. Again, if I go back to this map set, I can take it to 19.8. I suppose we could uh, see if we can fill this to 15 degrees advanced. And then we'll download that and see if it likes 15. Okay. And yeah, see, it's something they don't like about this either because for, oh, there she's acting up. We'll go back and put five in there. Oh, I guess you won't have to do that because it's our, okay, I downloaded a different map and it just so happens that I found a map set for a Durango. So I thought I'd give it a try, but when I look at, at the actual uh, map style, the timing style is what they call a delay falling. I got 16 uh, clicks per rev on here, and uh, we're gonna change a few of these settings to see if I can get it to read an RPM. Right now, it's locked on a five, so it's not reading any RPMs, but I know when I was working with this yesterday, I was able to get it to read RPMs, but it was usually off by double, triple, or quadruple of uh, what the RPM should be. So I'm going to start by just changing this uh, pull both and uh, we'll download that and see if that gets me an RPM reading and uh, we'll just go from there. Okay, by changing the A8, A9 off I'm still getting an RPM reading but again it is off substantially. So what I'm going to do now is if I change the signals per revolution, let's say I take it to 4, and close, and we'll download that, and we'll see what that happens. My guess is that's going to double up even more, but we'll see.
Okay. Yeah, and I'm reading in that uh, 5600 5, range, so it's actually getting worse. So then, reason would tell you that, well, this probably needs to be, if, it, if 8 doesn't work, maybe 16 is the ticket. And if I put 16 in, it'll probably go back to showing an RPM of 5. In other words, I don't believe it'll register an RPM at all. So that's the one that's rather uh, peculiar that I can't seem to get the RPMs to sync. It didn't like that at all. Okay, uh, to finish up here just for now, I basically went back to the very original map that I, I had in here, uh, which was uh, this uh, timing style of 48 Chrysler with uh, a signal per Revit 1 and an A10 pull a high. And uh, I get 300, 400 RPMs on the readout here, but on my uh, OBD2 connector, I'm really idling at 600 RPMs, which is by far more uh, believable than this thing dancing around between, you know, a high 200s to 400. But nevertheless, uh, I don't quite understand why it does that, but again, I've only been playing with this for a couple of weeks, and hopefully I'll be able to learn something here shortly. Catch you later.